All righty. We praise God for you, you, and you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. All right. We praise God for you, you, and you this morning. I count it an honor, as always, to be on assignment for God this morning. Hallelujah. I thank and praise God for all of you. I thank and praise God for Bishop Matthews and Lady Matthews. I give honor to you both. Hallelujah. I thank you for this opportunity. God bless you both giving such honor to both of you. I thank God for the work that you do. I may not be on every prayer line or Bible study that my husband participates on, but so many times I'm ear hustling, bucking and jerking in the back room as I hear the word go forth, as I hear all of you gathering together. I just thank God for the family of God that is stretched from north, south, east, and west, but one body of Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I thank God also for my husband, Pastor Jonathan Perry. I thank him for that lovely uh, uh, bio or intro, uh, introduction. I always get all blushy and shy when I have to hear that kind of stuff because for me, I'm just a, 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 a simple kind of gal. And I just do what I do because I love the people of God. I love souls. And I just want to see people operate at their best and highest. Hallelujah. So we're going to, uh, for the sake of time, we're going to just go right into the word on tonight. I pray that this word will go ahead and just resonate in your spirit. Oh, by the way, I see uh, several people on the line, so I want to give honor to those in your respective places, ministers, uh, you know, if we have pastors and preachers and whatever your respective place is, we give honor to you, you, and you. Hallelujah. So we're going to come right now, um, before I get, give you my text, we're going to just go into a brief word of prayer, and then we'll go ahead into the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for this day, for this is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for this gathering, O oh God. We appreciate that you see about us every day. We thank you for the word that you have prepared for your people, God, for you are the holder of your word. I am just a mere mouthpiece, God. So I invite your power. I invite your presence. I invite your anointing, God. Have you your way. Let the word go forth as you have prepared it, God. In the name of Jesus, we come against every fiery, every foul spirit. We come against every dark spirit. We come against the Satan and all of his kingdom. In the name of Jesus, uh, we even bind every technological interruption. In the name of Jesus, God, we're asking that your word will go forth with might and with power. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. All right. Glory be to God. If you have your Bibles, we want to come from Isaiah, the 40th chapter, and we're going to read from verses 28 to 31. Isaiah, the 40th chapter, verses 28 through 31. And it reads, and I'm reading from the King James. It says, Has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Verse 29, he give power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. Verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. My subject for this morning is don't get weary in the wait. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't get weary in the wait. Hallelujah. So in this text, in the book of Isaiah, the first 35 chapters, not verses, but the first 35 chapters, we see Isaiah prophesying a lot of 
condemnation and judgments and warnings. That's all he talks about for 35 whole chapters. Can you imagine hearing nothing but all the warnings and negativity? I'm sure Israel began to wonder, did God forget about them? He, they begin to wonder, did God even love them? Nothing but warnings and judgments. So by the time we reach this chapter, chapter 40, we see the love of God enter into the picture. We see the grace of God enter in. He even begins this chapter with comfort ye, comfort ye. Then he spent 31 verses reminding Israel that he is God. And he's in control. Yes. Well, sometimes on this journey that we walk, we sometimes can have the same feeling as Israel. Mm -hmm. We sometimes feel like, God, do you even hear us? Yeah. We pray and we pray and we're still waiting on some answers. Uh -huh. Well, I come to encourage you today and remind you that God is still in control. Yes, I come to remind you today that God hears every prayer that you pray. Yes, I come to remind you today that God is the author and the finisher of your faith. Yes. And he's with you and he knows everything that needs to happen in its due time. Yes. I encourage you this morning, don't you dare get weary in the wait. Yes. I know sometimes it seems like in life that things are going backwards. And it seems like that the wicked are winning. Oh, but believe me, it's not what it looks like. Yeah. Don't let the devil discourage you into thinking that evil is winning. Don't let the devil whisper in your mind and fuel your fears and your anxieties because of what you see. I'm here to tell you that you don't need to get weary in the time that you are waiting for God's promises. Uh -huh. There are many people in the Bible who have had to wait, and I'm going to name just a few. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, Noah had to wait 120 years as he built an ark, waiting and waiting for what was going to happen. 120 years he had to wait while the scoffers and the naysayers, uh, the haters and the character assassinators uh, began to laugh at him as he did what God said do. Yeah. I'm here to tell you, you and you, that if you are about your father's business, the haters will come along. Those who are going to assassinate your character will come along, but stay on the wall. Yeah. Abraham had to wait over 70 years for the promise of Isaac. Yeah. Can you imagine being a certain age and God told you that you were going to accomplish something and yet the years continually go by? I'm here to tell you it don't matter how old you are uh -huh. or what I like to say, it doesn't matter how seasoned you are. Uh -huh. My God, God can use anybody. Yeah. We even have natural examples. Uh, we know we love some KFC, some yeah. Kentucky Fried Chicken. Watch well, it. The, 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 uh, the one who created Kentucky Fried Chicken was 65 years old That's when right. he started that business. Yeah. Uh, don't tell me that you too old to do your purpose. Yeah. And, and number three, the children of Israel. We're waiting in bondage for 400 years. Come on, have you and I waited 400 years for anything and oh, we get God. antsy? I'm here to tell you that it took 400 years before they were freed and be able to walk into their promise. Yes. But even after they were freed, I'm here to tell you they had to walk around the wilderness for 40 years. Yes. My God and glory. So let me tell you that there are many people in the Bible that had to wait. 
Let's talk about old Jacob. Yeah. He had to wait seven years for Rachel uh, and then had to work another seven years before they could get married. Uh, how many of you waiting on a companion? Uh, how many of you are waiting to marry somebody? Uh -huh. uh, my God, don't you get weary in the wait. Uh -huh. Don't you get, get in God's way by going after someone that is not for you. Uh -huh. It is better that you wait yeah. so that God can give you the right one that will be attached to your assignment. Yeah, Hallelujah, your Jesus. Uh, come on, let's talk about Joseph. Uh, Joseph had to go through much suffering uh, yeah. and even waited several years before he was vindicated. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God, my God. Don't you get afraid of those that are hating on you, talking about you. Uh, my God, because one day God is going to come around uh, and put vengeance in place. Uh, yeah. That's why he says, vengeance is mine. Yeah. I will repay, uh, saith the Lord. Uh, come on here. Uh, oh, let's talk about Job. Job had to wait through much suffering. Yeah. Before everything was returned to him a hundredfold. Uh, you may be losing this, that, and the other. Uh, seems like the car is breaking down. Uh -huh. Seems like they want to come after you to foreclose on your house. Yeah. Uh, but I'm here to tell you uh, that sometimes uh, God has to clear out the land. Uh, uh -huh. Pull up all the weeds in your life. Uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. It looks like things are dying. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I'm here to tell you uh, that God is saying it's not what it looks like. Yeah. Uh, I'm clearing out everything because I'm going to bless you. Yeah. Take your time. Take your With time. the greater Hallelujah. Yeah. You're holding on to some things that God is saying to let go. So I'm here to tell you that even though it seems like it's taking so long, uh -huh. don't get weary in the wait. Yes, Come God. on and clap your hands and give God Hallelujah. some praise. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. <laughs> Let's tell you about a few others that had to wait. Yes. Daniel had to wait in the lion's den uh -huh. before God allowed him to be rescued. Uh -huh. Rebecca had to wait 20 years to have a child. Uh -huh. Mary had to wait 30 years uh, before she saw the promise that was in her belly uh, come, come forth as Messiah Jesus Christ. Uh, oh, blessed be the name of God. Uh, even Jesus had to wait. Uh, uh -oh. He had to wait till he was 30 years old uh, uh -huh. before his ministry began. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I wonder what was happening. What was Jesus doing for from birth till 30. Uh, but he had to wait. Uh, he knew he was the promise. Uh, he knew he was the Messiah. But he still had to wait for the appointed time. Uh, some of you out there, you know you have a call on your life. Uh, yeah. The fire is burning in your belly. On, but God says wait. Uh, you better wait. Uh, because there is a timing. Uh, there is a purpose for all things. Uh, yeah. My God, don't you dare get ahead of God, uh, but then don't get weary uh, while you're waiting. Yeah, uh, yeah. I have one more person uh, that is actually in a wait, uh, and that's God himself. Uh, he says in 2 Peter uh, 3 and 9, he says, the Lord uh, is not slow uh, to fulfill his promises as some count slowness, uh -huh. but he is Patient uh -oh, uh -oh. toward you, uh, not wishing that any should perish, yes. uh, but that all should reach repentance. Yes, uh, yes God, in all his greatness, uh, sits high on his throne, uh, waiting for you and I, uh, waiting for the sinner man to repent, uh, waiting for the backslider to come forth. Uh, I'm here to tell you that even God is waiting uh, because his mercy is so great. Uh, he doesn't want to see anybody perish. Uh, so he continually waits and waits on us uh, to get it right. Uh, he could rain down judgment. But God said, I'm going to wait. I'm going to send you the word. I'm going to 
send you preachers. I'm going to send you the witness yeah. just so that you can repent. Don't you dare get weary in the way. Come yeah. on and clap your hands. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Hello. Messiah. Glory. Glory be to God. Hey, hallelujah, Jesus. My God. Waiting is not new. Glory. Waiting is not new to mankind. Because we dwell in time. God is an eternal God, and he works according to purpose, timing, and seasons. Yes. Not time. Time was made for man. Yeah. It was made for us. And so I want you to think about it. Just think about how less stressful our lives would be if we didn't have calendars and watches. Imagine. Some of y'all right now getting real antsy because we are about to end 2021 and you got some goals and things you want to accomplish for 2022 and you feel like, oh, I haven't even begun. Well, if we didn't even have that calendar, we wouldn't be so stressed about timing. We wouldn't be so stressed about time. Yeah. We wouldn't be so nervous and feel like, well, I only have six more months. Yeah. Or I only have 24 hours. Uh -huh. My God, my God. Some of you right now, because you are aware of your age, wow. you're getting stressed about how much time you have. Yeah, you may be 50, 60, 70, or 80, but time is nothing with God. Yeah. God says it doesn't matter the years, the days, the months, the hours, yeah. because that's all made for us to organize our lives. Uh -huh. So that's why God says you've got to trust in him because he knows the timing uh -huh. of things. He knows how to move things so that they're in the right place at the right time. Uh -huh. But here's the dilemma. As people of God, we have to make sure that we follow the spirit of God uh -huh. and be led of his spirit and not allow anxiety, fear, and worry consume us yeah. just because it appears that God is not on time. God wants you to trust him yeah. and depend on him. Uh -huh. That's why he says, don't lean to your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways. And he'll do what? Direct your path. Ah, glory yeah. be to God. Yeah. But see, when you truly allow the spirit of God to direct you, he's not always going to give you all the details. Mm. See, because being led by the spirit is more about the who and not the what. Uh -oh. It's more about who you're following and not about what the minor details are. Mm -hmm. When you truly trust in who is leading you, yeah. the details don't matter. Uh, let me let that sink in. That I said when you truly depend on the who, yeah. The details don't even matter. Let me give you a natural example. Yeah. Remember when you were a child and mommy and daddy told you to do some things or that we were going to, let's say, go to Disney World yeah. <laughs> or whatever that might be. Notice as a child, you don't, you don't have to have all of the details. Yeah. Why? Because you trust the who the mommy and the daddy. Yeah. So because you trust in your parents, because you trust in the who, that's all that will give you rest. You don't need to know how we get in the Disney world. You don't need to know the date. You don't need to know how much money we gonna have. You don't need to know none of that. You just trust in the who. Well, God is the same way. See, we spend way too much time Wearing ourselves out when we got to wait for the promise. Right. Wearing ourselves out about the details when we pray to God about something. Uh, and it hasn't happened yet. Uh, uh -huh. We get weary in the details. Uh, but God is telling you right now yeah. that if you forget about the who, what, if you forget about the what, the why, the how we going to do this, God said just rest in knowing uh, that I am the I am God.
God. I, I can command all things so. Yeah. I am Jehovah Jireh. Yeah. That even though in your bank account doesn't look like it can make it happen. Yeah. God said if you trust in who I am, uh -huh. that I am the same God uh, that provided for the children of Israel in the wilderness. Yeah. Uh, I'm that same God. Uh, so don't you weary yourself while you're waiting. Uh -huh. uh, continue to trust uh, in God. Yeah. Uh, trust because we have examples in the Bible uh, of how God showed up. Uh, yeah. He showed up for Noah. Uh, he showed up for Job. Yeah, he yeah. showed up for Mary. Uh, yeah. All of the ones in the Bible. Uh, uh -huh. I'm here to encourage you. Uh, don't you dare get weary in the wait. Yeah. So let me quickly move along. Uh, why does God make us wait? Yeah. Well, number one, to prepare you uh, and to equip you personally. Yeah. Uh, see, God can make anything happen instantly. Uh, yeah. But a lot of times right. we're not ready for what God has for us. Uh, so God oftentimes uh, causes us to wait uh, because he's trying to develop you. Uh, uh -huh. See, God is not going to destroy you uh, even mm -hmm. though some things feel so difficult. Uh, some things feel so hard, uh, yeah. but it's to develop you. Uh, yeah. Let's look at Deuteronomy 8. Uh, one and two. Uh, this is speaking to the children of Israel, uh, but it's for us today. Yeah. Uh, this is why God has us wait. Uh, he said, every commandment which I command you today, uh, yeah. you must be careful to observe. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the same for us today. Uh, God has given us instructions, uh, direction. He's given us clarity about the things. Uh, so he's telling you, you must be careful to observe. Mm -hmm. uh, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land uh, which the Lord swore to your fathers. Yeah. Uh, so God is saying, I've given you commandments. Uh, I've given you instructions uh, so that you can live more abundantly. Yeah. Uh, but he says, and you shall remember uh, that the Lord your God led you all these 40 years in the wilderness. Yeah. Uh, why? Three things. Uh, to humble you and to test you, mm -hmm. and to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. Wow. You ought to get that scripture in your spirit. Uh, Deuteronomy 1 and 2, uh, because when you find yourself in wilderness experiences, yes. uh, Hello, COVID-19. Uh, ah. Wilderness experience. Yeah, uh, yeah. At this time, the people of God, uh, God is saying to you uh, that I take you through wilderness experiences uh, uh -huh. for three reasons. Uh, to humble you, yeah. um, to test you, uh, and to know what's in your heart. Yeah. Uh, well, we're seeing how even COVID-19 uh, is uncovering what was really in people's heart uh, uh -oh, when uh -oh. it came to the things of God. Uh -oh. uh, people are falling off at left and right. Uh, those that you thought were so spiritual in church, uh, uh -oh. all it took was one wilderness experience uh, called COVID-19. Uh, and people stop praying. Uh, uh -oh. People stop living holy. Uh, people are getting in all kinds of things. Uh, God sent this kind of stuff uh, to see what is truly in your heart, uh, yeah. whether you would keep his commandments or not. Yeah. Uh, all glory be to God. Uh, so just like the children of Israel, uh, so it is with us. Uh, God has given us all the grace uh, to make it through everything. Uh, yes. Everything that comes your way uh, comes with grace. Uh, yes. So my God, when you feel like it's too hot, uh, when you feel like it's too tough, uh, yes. remember God has fully equipped you to handle it. Uh, yes. There are some things I see other people go through. Uh, and I said, Lord, I couldn't go through that. Oh, oh. But let me tell you, they were graced even for that. Yeah. There are things I'm graced for yeah. that may be too difficult for you. Yeah. So God won't ever let that thing touch you. But then there are some things, my God, that I can go through because God has given me the grace. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here to tell you, don't let the devil fool you uh -huh. into thinking you can't make it. Yeah. Turn your worry into worship. Yeah. Turn your panic into praise. Yeah. Come on, come on. Turn your anxiety into appreciation. Yeah. Turn your fear into faith. Yeah. Don't on. trust in what you 
see. Trust in who you serve. Hey, glory be to God. My God, my God. Uh, Number two, why does God make us wait? To show you what his will is and keep you on your divine purpose. See, there are many times that you are praying and praying for certain things. And you're wondering why they're not coming to pass. Because sometimes what you are praying for is not a part of your divine journey. And so sometimes God will have you wait and see why he didn't allow that thing to happen. Ah. I'm here to tell you, sometimes he wants you to wait and see. Mm -hmm. I want you to take a minute and think back on your life. How if God allowed certain things to happen when it did, how terrible your life could have been. Or maybe if God had allowed you to be with a certain person, uh, but you were wondering why he didn't answer that prayer. Well, now you can look back and go, ooh, Lord, you knew what you were doing. (laughs) So sometimes we're praying for stuff because even the Bible says we don't even know what we ought to pray. uh, And God will let you wait through the process. Uh, He'll let you wait months, sometimes years. uh, And then uh, at the appointed time, God will cause you to look back. And then when you look back and go, whoo, what the lesson in that is, is you should have trusted in the who and not the what. Hey, glory be to God. I can name many things in my life uh, that I had a plan for and God didn't let it happen. And at the time, I was bothered by God. I was like, Lord, you know I really wanted this. Uh, There was a time I said I was going to move to the Caribbean in Puerto Rico. Uh, I had everything set in place. Uh, Uh, I had the right job because I was like, oh, I can work from anywhere. I had a plan. It was my plan. And when God shut down that contract, uh, I was bothered. I was bothered for several months. I was like, Lord, now you know I wanted to go to Puerto Rico. Uh, Lord, I had everything in place. Uh, Why did you let the contract shut down? I couldn't understand it. Well, forward a couple of years, when Hurricane, God is funny, when Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico and practically wiped it out, had I gone at the time that I thought I should have went, I would have been in the middle of Hurricane Maria. See, I thought I knew it all. I thought that I was praying and praying. Uh, I thought that, oh, yes, I got my life pre- uh, together. Yeah. And God knew uh, that I was too stubborn uh, not to quit the job, so he took it away. Uh, I didn't understand at the time why God did that. Uh, yeah. But he already knew what was coming in the future. Uh, so he had to stop that. Uh, then when I would look back, What did I do? I gave God some praise. Uh, Sometimes, hallelujah, Hallelujah. God will cause things to happen. God will cause things to happen uh, just to get a praise out of you, Uh uh, just to show you who he is. uh, Because some of us are so stubborn, uh, Uh stiff-necked. My God, we're going to do what we want to (laughs) do. So Uh God has to use situations and circumstances uh, to teach us some things. Uh, You won't listen if he sent a preacher. Uh, Uh You won't listen if he sent a family member. Uh, So sometimes it takes the circumstances of life uh, to get to your to get to you uh, yeah. to teach you something uh, so don't you dare uh, get weary in the wait uh, oh, and finally uh, my God as I wrap up uh, my God number three uh, where it says where he says the reason uh, that he makes you wait uh, is because sometimes uh, uh-huh. the timing uh, uh-huh. is not right for the next move yes, uh, yes. sometimes the timing is not right for the next move. Oh, yeah. What are you saying, Pastor? Uh, well, God is like a chess player. Uh, uh-huh. Now, I don't know a whole lot about chess, uh, but I've l- looked at chess players many times. Yeah. Uh, and in chess, it's all about the move. Uh, This is why you see uh, that chess can take hours sometimes. Uh, Sometimes it can take days to complete a board. Uh, Each player will create uh, each play will create another scenario. Uh, How you move is important. Uh, It's not about just this move, uh, but if you ever look at a chess player, uh, they study the whole board. 
They're looking at all of the moves. Because one wrong move can throw the whole game Ah, up. Well, you are one of God's chess moves. Ah. This game is bigger than you. It's like God is sitting up above this chessboard called life. Uh And he knows what moves he has to make Uh with you. God allows you to move at the right timing because he studies what's ahead of the game. Uh He's studying the other moves. This game is between the forces of evil and the forces of darkness. And every time the devil makes a move, God makes another move. And at the end of the day, we already know who's going to win. We already know who's going to win this game. So I'm here to tell you that sometimes it looks like God is moving you forward, but then sometimes you got to move you backwards. Not to lose the game, but to make sure you're in the right place at the right time for the next move. Hallelujah, Jesus. So my final point here, my God, is what do you do when you wait? I'm going to wrap up with this. What do you do when you wait? Because we all are going to have to wait. But the key is not to get tired, not to get weary, but to keep your focus. So the first thing you got to do is increase your communication with God. Uh I know this seems repetitive. Uh I know this seems basic. Uh But I'm here to tell you that while you're waiting, the enemy will start to bombard your mind. He'll start to tell you lies about what's happening in the wait. So it is important that while you're waiting, keep talking to God. While you're waiting, Uh seek God for instruction, direction, clarity. My God, in the name of Jesus. And even in the communication, remember part of communication is listening. Some of y'all in communication, you're talking too much. Uh All you do is talk, talk, talk. Sometimes Sometimes you got to listen. Sometimes you got to sit back and listen for an answer. Sometimes God won't talk to you right in the middle of prayer, but he'll talk to you while you're doing the dishes. He'll talk to you while you're driving down the road. He'll talk to you while you're walking through your house. My God in glory. So you got to listen because you got to listen for the next move. Don't get weary in the wait. Number two, set aside time. My God for meditation. Yeah. Sometimes your prayer doesn't always have to be talk, but sometimes just go in your closet and sit. Yeah. Sit and open up your oh, spirit to God and Hallelujah. watch him unfold the answer uh-huh. to you. Yes, watch sir. him speak to you all the cares that you need. Uh-huh. My God, number three, take authority over your thoughts. Uh-huh. Stop letting the devil lay you out on the couch uh, whispering negativity to you. Yes, the yes, minute that that devil starts talking, uh, Get up from there. Uh, Take your God-given authority uh, and rebuke him in the name of Jesus. uh, Because you've got to keep your mind. Uh, The Bible says uh, that he will keep you in perfect peace uh, whose mind is stayed on him. Uh, I'm here to tell you better find peace uh, in the wait. Uh, Number four, uh, speak the word of God uh, and command your day. You got to get up every day with the word of God. Yeah. Uh, that's how Jesus defeated the devil. Uh, yeah. The devil is, is his main mission uh, is to wear you out. Uh, yeah. So I'm here to tell you, uh, my God, speak the word back to him. Yeah. Uh, you got to get the word in your heart uh, so that when you start to feel anxiety uh, in the wait, uh, yeah. Yeah. stand on the word of God. Uh, speak the word of God back to him. Yeah. Uh, my God, and number five, uh, trust the process yeah. uh, and be okay if God says no. Uh, yeah, yeah, honey, yeah. you got to trust the process. Uh, <laughs> glory be to God. Uh, for Romans 8 and 18 says, uh, for I reckon, uh, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time uh, are not co- worthy to be compared uh, to the glory which should be revealed in us. Uh, yeah. I said the sufferings of this present 
time. Yeah. The sufferings of what you might be going through. Yeah. It's not even going to compare yeah. to what God has for you. Yeah. He's going to get glory out of your life. Yeah, he He's going to get a praise out of you. On, so here. I'm here to tell you, don't you dare get weary in the wait. If I had to leave another scripture with you as I close, don't you forget Romans 8 and 28. And we know, and we know, you got to get a no in you that all things, all things, even the ugly thing, even the discouraging thing, even the thing that puts pain in your heart, even the thing that makes tears go down your face. I said all things work together for good, for good, for good. Not to everybody, but to them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. Do you love God? Do you love him? Yeah, yeah. Are you called according to his purpose? Yeah. That I'm here to give you hope this morning. Yeah. I'm here to tell you that all things oh. are working together for good. Yeah. Don't get weary in the wait. Hallelujah. Come on and praise God this morning. Hallelujah. 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 God is faithful. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Bless you, people of God. We hope that this word blessed you, and we hope that you carry it in your heart. That when the going gets tough or when it seems like your prayers are not being answered, yes. remember God sees everything. He's the master chess player, and he knows where you need to be and what needs to happen to win this game. Yes. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Yes. Hallelujah. Firstly. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God.